Hello again, last video of this term and we're on chapter 28 of Frost Hollow Hall. This is called The Seance. The first tray of sandwiches went up at seven. Dorcas came back down looking tense and pale. The mediums arrived. What is she like, said Gracie, who was sat by the stove and under strict orders to stay there. Dorcas pulled a face, vulgar, calls herself Madame Martineau to sound foreign when everyone knows she's just Mrs Martin from the next village. She turned to me. Take your tray up quick, they're about to start. I went upstairs with cake and little silver dishes of ice cream. My hand shook so hard the spoons rattled. It was a wonder I didn't spill the lot. Jiggling the tray onto my hip, I knocked at Kit's door. Enter! Her ladyship sounded nervous, high-pitched. I went in. The room was hot and dark. And as I felt my way to the nearest side table, I heard the chinking of teacups and a voice I didn't know. Are we all ready? It said. Yes, said her ladyship. Please leave us, Matilda. I could just make out three figures sat together in a circle. Lady Barrington was on the edge of her chair. She wore the brooch on the front of her dress. I doubted that she ever took it off. Next to her had to be the medium, Madame Martineau, dressed in a too tight bodice and still wearing her hat. In her lap was a little notepad and pencil. The third person was Mrs Jessop. My guts clenched at the sight of her. She didn't look at me. She sat stern and straight with her eyes fixed on the wall. I went to go. Behind me came a rustling of skirts and the thud of a chair tipping over like someone had stood up too fast. I turned round to see Mrs Jessop on her feet. I cannot be a part of this, she said, wringing her hands. Please forgive me, but I cannot stay. Lady Barrington hissed, sit down. I cannot. It's an order. Sit down. Mrs. Mrs. Jessop breathed in sharply. Then it's an order I cannot follow. Any second they'd notice me still here. My feet seemed rooted to the spot. I need you here, Mrs. Jessop, said Lady Barrington. Those silly girls below stairs just wouldn't do. I need someone who will hold her nerve. And you must know what this means to me. You, of all people... Mrs Jessop stood ramrod straight, though her chin quivered slightly. Indeed I do, your ladyship, and for that reason I cannot stay. Good evening to you. She bobbed her head and swept past me for the door. Let her go, said Madame Martineau, patting Lady Barrington's arm. If she's not willing, it'll upset the circle. The spirits only come to those who believe. But there's only two of us now. You said we needed at least three. Madame Martineau motioned to me. Come forward, there's a good girl. You can be our third. I didn't think I'd heard right. Well, come on then, quickly. She meant me. Me! I felt sick and uneasy. But what could I do? I put down my tray and stumbled forwards. Lady Barrington rolled her eyes. Here I was, a silly girl from the kitchens. But it seemed she had no choice. I picked up the fallen chair and placed it back in the circle. My knees were shaking now. I was glad to sit down. You aren't a giddy girl, are you? said Madame Martineau to me. No, ma'am. And do you believe in the spirit world? I swallowed. I do, ma'am. And I sent spirits here in this house. Then you are a welcome addition to our little circle, said Madame Martineau, smiling. Now, take the hand to your left. Lady Barrington snatched up my hand and gripped it tight. I squirmed, thinking how rough it must feel to her. And now the hand to your right. Madame Martineau's palm was sticky and warm. As I took hold, she jerked in her seat. You're a live wire, aren't you, she cried. The spirits are drawn to you, I can tell. Lady Barrington looked at me then like she'd seen me for the very first time. I was glad when Madame Martineau instructed us to shut our eyes. She cleared her throat, took a long breath through her nose. Our purpose tonight is to contact Kit, most beloved son of Lady Barrington, she said. Her voice silky, like she was soothing away wood horse. This must be our one and only thought. If our minds wander, it will divide the circle and the spirits won't feel wanted. What's more, we must be patient. No gasping or fawning or forcing the spirits to come. Lady Barrington's hand twitched in mine. The room fell silent. I sat still, head bowed, listening to the blood pounding in my ears. Would Kit really come to us? Last night the spirit had left me all alone in this sad, sad room. I still couldn't shake off the emptiness I'd felt here. 
I only hoped the ghost was listening now. No one spoke. The file crackled in the grate. Nothing was happening. After a while, my mind began to wander. I had an itch on my leg and was dying to scratch it. I could smell the food on the table behind me. Somewhere outside, a fox barked. Of a sudden, a coldness seized me. I started to shake. The hands holding mine gripped tightly. My eyes flew open. Her ladyship was looking about her nervously. Gently now, said the medium. Her head was tipped back, her eyes still shut. She seemed to be speaking to the spirit. You've come far to be with us and we've waited a long time. Take your time. The hairs on my arms lifted and my heartbeat quickened. Yet mixed with my fear was a kind of relief. For tonight, something was different. The spirit wasn't waiting outside the door. This time it was here, inside the room. Madame Martineau's fingers felt ice cold. She fell back in her seat with a gasp. When she spoke, her voice was strange, all high-pitched like a girl's. Have you come to play? The drapes at the window began to sway. Then play nicely with us, there's a good... On the table behind me, the china rattled. I began to feel sick. Lady Barrington's mouth fell open. She stared in horror at something above my head. I turned slowly in my seat, dreading what I'd see. Nothing looked amiss on the table. I glanced upwards and froze. Floating inches above my head was a cup. A cup! So close I saw the maker's stamp on the base of it. Could reach out and touch it. Make it stop. But my arms were heavy. They wouldn't move. I stared and stared, transfixed. I was dimly aware of Lady Barrington, gasping and sighing in her seat and the medium's queer girlish voice saying, Listen to the spirit, Tilly. Ask what it wants. I blinked, swallowed hard. Spirit, I said, why are you here tonight? The cup seemed to quiver. I held my breath. Then, like some fairground trick, it whizzed over our heads, smashing to pieces in the hearth. The fire hissed and spat. The room fell silent again. It was an eerie, dangerous sort of quiet. Lady Barrington started to weep. My mouth turned dry as the fear in me grew. We bring you love, child, said Madame Martineau. Please hear us. But the spirit wouldn't reply. An icy draught blew around us, making the lamps flicker and sigh. We'd all dropped hands by now. Her ladyship's face was deathly pale and streaked with tears. My own heart beat so fast I feared I'd faint. Madame Martineau swayed in her chair. Do you have a message? Silence. Lady Barrington cried, anything, a sign, a word. Madame Martineau's eyes snapped open. She seized her ladyship's arm. Hush now, please, you'll frighten it away. Once again, the room fell silent. Lady Barrington sat still, though her earrings trembled against her neck. I gripped the sides of my chair and waited. Nothing. The medium leaned towards me. Perhaps you should try, dearie. Lady Barrington looked bewildered. But you said... Madame Martineau gave a solemn shake of the head and indicated me. I sat forward in my seat. It had to be worth a try. Please, spirit, I said, steady as I could. Do you have something to tell us? For I was beginning to realise. Last night's empty room had been a message for me. Tonight the spirit had another person in its sights. Madame Martineau had picked up her pencil, her notepad now open on a blank page. She was poised, ready. All was still. Try again, Tilly, she said. I sense it is listening. Do you have a message for one of us? I'd barely finished speaking when a strange tapping sound started. It came from over by Kit's bed. The taps were slow and steady, like a ball bouncing and seemed to inch forwards towards our circle. I fell back in my seat, snatching my feet up from the floor. Her ladyship twisted round to face the noise. It stopped at her chair. She breathed sharply and turned her huge eyes on Madame Martineau. It's me, isn't it? It wants me. Madame Martineau nodded. The spirit has a message for you. 
and her ladyship seemed so full of joy. I could hardly bear to look. Oh, my darling boy, it's you, she breathed, at last. But Madame Martineau was frowning and shaking her head. The air felt charged with spite. How could this be Kit? Dear, sweet Kit. My head spun with dreadful thoughts. What if he harmed us? What if he wanted some sort of revenge? The tapping started again, moving away from Lady Barrington towards the table full of Kit's books. This time the noise was faster, urgent. I hardly dared breathe. Just as it had started, the tapping stopped. The quiet was thick. No one moved. Our eyes fixed on that table. We waited. Nothing seemed to be happening. Then ever so slowly, one of the books began to move. Only the pages fluttered, first one way, then the other, like they were caught in a breeze. I knew which book it was all right. Even from my seat, I could see the angel drawing and the page of fancy lettering at the end. To my dear, to my dearest. It was a job not to gasp out loud. Kit's message to his own dear mother. Unsteadily, Lady Barrington got to her feet and made her way to the table. The lamps flickered. She reached out and as her hand hovered over the fluttering book, its pages stilled. Finger shaking, she began to turn each one, with agonising slowness at first, then faster as her face lit up. I was mesmerised, my own heart stirred. A message to his mother, at last. But as her ladyship reached the final page, her hand flew to her mouth. She turned to us. Her look now was one of absolute horror. What is it? I cried. What's wrong? Lady Barrington touched her forehead. She looked about to swoon. Then she summoned strength enough to take the few steps to Kit's bed. I expected her to collapse onto it. Instead, she crouched down before the little bedside cupboard. Madame Martineau cried, No! I felt it too, a jolt ran right through me. Lady Barrington didn't seem to hear us, or if she did, she didn't respond. She opened the cupboard and pulled a drawer halfway out. For a moment she swayed. She put out a hand to steady herself. Then she took something from the drawer. At first I couldn't quite see what it was, but as she stood upright again, she held it before her. The object was flat, the size of a tea tray and wrapped in brown paper and string. Her ladyship stared at it like it was poison. Madame Martineau slumped in her seat, exhausted. One by one, the lights brightened and the air in the room grew warmer. It was Kit's bedchamber again, a strange, sad place, but nothing more. My racing heart began to slow. The spirit had left us. Madame Martineau blinked like a person waking from a long sleep, then wrote something down in her notebook. Once finished, she squinted at the page and drew a long breath. Good girl, she said to me. The spirits respond well to you. Then she called to Lady Barrington. Please join us. Our visitor from the other side has revealed its name. Oh, her ladyship didn't seem to be listening. She was turning the package over and over in her hands. Yes, it's a short name. Three letters, in fact. My chest went tight. Her ladyship dropped the package and flew across the room. She snatched up the notebook, eyes flitting across the page. Her mouth fell open. Again, that look of utter horror. She flung the pad back at Madame Martineau. What is the meaning of this? Do you wish to torture me? No, said Madame Martineau uneasily. It's what the spirit told me to write. Is that so? Why, yes, you saw yourself. The spirit isn't happy and it wanted to tell you. And I think it wanted Tilly to know too. Lady Barrington stared at me. You? What on earth? Please, I said, let me see the writing. Her ladyship gave a wild laugh. But Madame Martineau passed me the notepad and pointed to the word. Though the writing was faint and shaky, the letters were clear. The name wasn't Kit. It was Ada. Chapter 29. An Unpleasant Task. Madame Martineau watched me like a cat at a mouse hole. I felt the flush spread across my cheeks. Well, dearie, does it mean anything to you? Yes, you daft woman, I thought to myself. It means everything. For, of course, this bad spirit wasn't Kit Barrington. 
How could I ever have thought it? He'd saved my life. He wanted my help. He'd never do harm to me. Though the relief didn't last long. With a sinking feeling, I remembered last night's dream and how the ice had seemed so close to breaking. Yet still, Kit couldn't be free of it. He couldn't rest in peace. This wasn't finished. The truth still had to be revealed. I don't know no one called Ada, I said, which was a sort of lie, since I'd encountered her spirit more times than I'd cared to. And on my upper arm, I still bore the bruises to prove it. I reckoned Madame Martineau guessed this. For a moment more, her gaze lingered on me. Then Lady Barrington said sharply, Don't pretend you haven't heard the stories. I know what goes on below stairs, all that gossip late into the night. No, your ladyship, I swear. I had never heard this name before. Young girls like you with your heads full of nonsense. Your ladyship, please, said Madame Martineau. Tilly has a way with the spirits. Ada didn't want to communicate much with me. It was you two she was drawn to. It might be worth listening to Tilly. But I'd nothing to say. I trembled still. All I wanted was a moment to myself to let everything sink in. I got to my feet. May I be excused, please? Lady Barrington fixed me with a glittering stare. It's you, isn't it? You did this. Pardon, my lady? Then she turned to the medium who was nervously rearranging her hat. You're to blame too. You sent Mrs Jesper away and put this trollop in her place. No wonder it didn't work. But your ladyship, I can't call spirits that don't want to come, she said. He's my only son, of course he'd want to come. I felt truly awful. Because Kit hadn't come, had he? Just like he'd not come to her for the last ten years. But Ada came at least, said Madame Martineau. Blast Ada, blast the lot of you. The room fell silent. Madame Martineau went red in the face. Well... I don't expect to be spoken to like this, lady or no lady, she said, and started to gather her things. A bit of foul talk didn't bother me. It was the name Ada that I couldn't shake off. And like a lamp being lit inside my head, I realised I did know it from somewhere. It was a name I'd seen, here at the hall. No surname, just Ada. Even thinking on it made me go cold. I knew exactly where I'd seen it. That day I'd come to see Kit's grave, it was Ada's I'd found first. I could picture it now, clear as if I was stood before it, that little rusted headstone poking up through the snow, the words taken too soon carved into it. I felt a lump in my throat. Just last night her spirit had led me here to this room, this very room, Kit's room. My thoughts took a strange turn. Might I say something, I said, heart thumping. Her ladyship didn't look up. She'd picked up the package again, but seemed to have no intention of opening it, holding it from her at arm's length like it was about to explode. Madame Martineau urged me, got, merged me on. Go ahead, dearie. I took a deep breath. Did Ada ever know Kit? Her ladyship's face went red, then white. She laid a hand on her chest and swayed like she might faint. As I went to help her, she flinched. Stay away from me. But she might be trying to tell us something. I'm warning you, stay back. I stopped. I'm sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to upset you. It's too late for that, she cried. Now get back downstairs and out of my sight. I'll send up Dorcas, I said, and rushed for the door. Madame Martineau was right behind me. Once I'd shown Madame Martineau out, I took a moment to get myself straight. The passage below stairs was quiet and dark and I was glad of it since my head was fit to burst with all that had happened and I hardly knew what to think. One thought shouted loud above the others. Kit and Ada. There was a link between them. I was certain of it. Her ladyship had got in a lather at just the mention of their names and what the heck had been inside that package? It seemed to be connected to Kit's sketchbook and the writing on the last page. One look at all those fancy to my dearests and Lady Barrington had gone straight over to the drawer. My mind spun off in all directions then, searching out the things I still didn't grasp. But my thoughts came back all jumbled up and silly. I was too flipping tired to even think right. I reckoned it was time for bed. I headed back to the kitchens, hoping to make myself a quick cup of tea. Dorcas was talking with Mr Phelps in the doorway. They looked up when they saw me. She mouthed the word sorry, then slipped away. Mr Phelps stepped forward, blocking my path. 
Ah, Matilda, he said sternly. Since we cannot locate Mrs Jessop, this unpleasant task falls to me. Step into my pantry, please. Am I in trouble? The tilt of his head seemed to say so. My heart sank like a stone. Tonight had been my last chance to prove myself as a housemaid. In that sense, things hadn't gone well. I followed him into his room. He shut the door behind us. He stayed standing and didn't pull up a chair for me. Yes, I'm afraid you are in trouble, Mr Phelps said, looking at a, looking at a place somewhere near my chin. There has been some sort of commotion upstairs this evening. I felt myself go red. Please, sir, if I could just... It is not our place to comment on such proceedings, he said, cutting me short. However, Matilda, it seems that since your arrival in this house, there has been much talk of spirits and the like. I didn't start it. They was all full of it when I got here. Which, he continued, is unsettling to the other staff and deeply unsettling to Lord and Lady Barrington. But that ain't my fault, I said. I ain't the one keeping a fire lit all day and night. Hold your tongue, young lady. I bit my lip. What else I had to say would keep. Her ladyship insists that you leave. Of course, it had been coming. Still, it felt like a punch to the guts. And I didn't want to cry in front of him, so I fixed my eyes on the floor. Tonight. My temper flared. Now, hang on a minute. That ain't fair. I was trying to help her ladyship. Really, I was. I hardly see how. But it was her idea. She wanted to contact Kit and I weren't even meant to be part of it. Mr Phelps held up his hand. Enough. I started to panic. But, sir, please, I'll do anything. Wash dishes, I enclose anything. In my mind, I saw our landlord's leering face and Ma all frail and low. Without me earning a fair wage, we'd be out on the streets within days. And then there was Kit. I couldn't leave now. Not when Ada's spirit had been trying to tell us something. Just a bit longer here at Frost Hollow Hall. And I reckoned I'd uncover the truth. But Mr Phelps was already signalling that I should take off my cap and pinny. Go upstairs and collect your things. You can return the rest of your uniform to Dorcas. So you really are chucking me out. At night? He nodded gravely. Her ladyship wishes it so. There's nothing more to say on the matter. We'll see you have a light to guide you home. And that's the end of the chapter. And possibly Tilly's time at Frost Hollow Hall. You'll have to wait till after half term for more. Have a fantastic break. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.